Now, don't get me wrong in this video, I love JavaScript, I'm a huge fan. In fact, it's the first programming language that I learned, and it's one that I still use today and still enjoy it thoroughly. But a couple of years ago, I stepped away from it in my career to focus more on C-sharp programming. And if you've used C-sharp, you know that it runs a tight ship. It lets you know when you can and can't do something. And at first, that can be annoying, having all of these checks in place. But in the long run, you feel more confident in your code, you write cleaner code, and that's kind of what I got used to. And when I came back to JavaScript, it felt dirty, like a little sloppy. I remember writing a function and just like adding in parameters, not having to declare what types they are. And I thought like, wow, this could be a problem in a big code base. And I'll actually show you later why that is. And before using C Sharp, I didn't think anything was wrong with it. In fact, I thought developers were really arrogant to be like, JavaScript's messy, JavaScript's nasty, because I've never been on the other side in statically typed languages. But again, coming back to JavaScript, I see that. Now, if you've been in only in JavaScript or only in Python, you may, you may think I'm one of those arrogant guys, I'm not. But I just felt the language was a little dangerous when I came back to it. For example, if I type a string of five minus two, which I shouldn't be able to do anyway, five is a string, two is an integer. I shouldn't be able to do this, in JavaScript you can. If I type this in, string five minus two, I get three, which is okay, that's right, I guess. But if I do the same thing, string five plus two, I get 52. I don't know about you, but that's a little wacky. Aside from the fact that one actually subtracts the numbers while the other just concatenates a string, I shouldn't be able to do a string plus an integer. Well, what can we do? Well, if you agree that is a problem, then I think I can help you out in this video. What if we could add additional functionality to JavaScript to make it more safe? What if we can have all those safety checks that we get in other languages like C Sharp? Well, we can, and it's called TypeScript and it's what today's video is about. So what is TypeScript? Well, it's mostly explained as a superset of JavaScript. I personally don't think it can be really declared a superset, but essentially it just extends the JavaScript functionality in a few ways that we're gonna discuss now. And what I'm gonna give you is five reasons you should be using TypeScript with your JavaScript. Well, one of TypeScript's main functionalities is to provide static type checking or type safety for JavaScript. This allows us to describe the shapes and behaviors or what our values will be when our program runs. Static type checking gives us the error message before we even run the code. As you probably already know, JavaScript is a dynamically typed language, which means it performs a type check at runtime. So any errors there won't be caught until the program runs. Now TypeScript extends JavaScript to allow for static type checking or the ability to perform type checks at compile time. So when the code is compiled, not when it's ran. So you catch everything beforehand. So I'm gonna open up my VS code and type a few things here. So if I declare a variable like let x equals 55, that's a number, right? But let's say I have a large code base and later on in my code base, this gets redeclared as a string. So I can say x is equal to 55, the string. Now, first off, I shouldn't be able to do this because it started out as a number. I shouldn't be able to redeclare it as a string. But if I do uh, a console.log x and then a console.log type of x, save it and run this, so node main.js, I see that, that x is 55, but it's now a string. And to me, that's pretty dangerous because you wouldn't catch this until runtime. You wouldn't know that it got redeclared as a string until the application is running. Now with TypeScript, it would not only alert you when you compile the code, but it would let you know when you're typing. So with TypeScript, I can explicitly say this is supposed to be an integer and it's gonna hold me accountable to that. Or I can implicitly let it decide that it's an integer, but either way, it's not gonna allow me to do this. So I'm gonna open a new file, let's just call it, um, let's just call it test.ts. And by the way, VS Code and all of the main IDEs have TypeScript support built in. So all you gotta do is just create a TS file and you'll get a lot of the benefits. Now you can't compile it, but you'll get the benefits which we're gonna talk about next. The autocorrect in real time error messaging. So in TypeScript, you can avoid this kind of issue by declaring your types. So I can say let x, and x is gonna be a number, so I put colon number equals 55. So this x cannot be reassigned to any other type. I cannot make it a string. If I try to do that, x equals a string of 55, it's gonna yell at me. 
I have a red squiggly that says type string is not assignable to type number. Now, if I wanted a Boolean, I would just say Boolean. And it's already going to throw an error because 55 is not a Boolean. But if I put false, good to go. And then also you can do string. Um, those are kind of the main three types. Now that's explicitly defining the types, but TypeScript can implicitly define them as well. So if I put let x equals false, it's going to know, hey, this is a Boolean. And at the same time, I can't do x equals 5 because it implicitly defined that as a Boolean and it's going to hold me to it. So that's the benefit of static type checking. Now, a few more examples. Um, if I wanted to create a function, so how do you declare types with functions? Well, let's see. If I go back to my JS file, let's create a function called add. And as a parameter, I'm going to pass in n for number. And then it's just going to say n plus n. That's what it's going to return. It's just going to add two numbers together. So let's console.log this function. So I'm going to say add, and then I'm going to pass in like 5. And it should say 5 plus 5 is 10. So if I run this, it's going to give us 10. But what happens if I accidentally passed in a string? And so 5 as a string, what's it going to give me? 10? No, it gives me 55. So if you start something out as an integer, and then you get deep in your code base, and something comes in the wrong format, and you're like, oh, it's just a string. It'll add it up fine. Well, it will add it up, but you won't know that that number will be way off from what it's supposed to be. This is supposed to be 10. It's showing 55. So what I can do in TypeScript, if I put it in here, and I can say console.log add, uh, let's say, 5 again. But what I want to do is I want to declare the types. So I want to say n of type number. And what else you can do is you can define what it returns. So I can say uh, number. It returns a number. Now when I run this, it's of course going to give me 10. But what if I accidentally passed in a string? Well, it's going to give me an error here. It's going to say argument of type string is not assignable to parameter of type number. Thank goodness I declare that as a number. Now, it can also be implicitly assigned. Like I can remove the number of the return and it, it'll be fine. So change this back to five. It'll assume that it's an integer because that's what I'm passing in. I can always delete this too and it will imply it as well. But what it implies means I can't change it to something else. That's the type safety. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is this concept of interfaces. So with TypeScript, you can use interfaces. And if you're not familiar with that, an interface is basically a contract that an entity must hold to. It defines the properties of something in that something that you create must match those properties. So let me just show you in an example. So if I do interface person, what does that person have? Well, they have a name of type string. They have an age of type number. And what else? Let's say they have a phone number of type number. This means whenever a person is created, it has to fulfill this interface. It has to have these three properties. It can't have more. It can't have less. It holds this entity accountable to this interface. So now when I create a new person, let's say let P of type person, this is how you do it. So instead of type Boolean or string, it's a type of person equals, and then I can say name, name equals Travis, age equals 40, has to be a number. And then phone number, let's say I, I want the phone number to be optional. Well, you might see this in other languages. You just put a question mark here and that makes it optional. So this, per, this P of type person implements this interface. It matches this data structure. Now, if I took this optional off, I would get an error. It would say, hey, property phone is missing in type, and it's required in the type of person. So those are just a few data types I wanted to show you. Again, TypeScript extends JavaScript to allow static type checking, and these were a few examples of that. Now, number two, TypeScript gives you code completion in error checks as you type. And like I said earlier, major IDEs have TypeScript built in. So as you're typing, as you're writing your code, it's going to give you these checks. You probably saw that in the last examples. But let me give you a few more. So let's say we have a, uh, a variable called message, and we'll just say hello. 
Well, what if later in my code base, I want to call message as a function? Like I'm thinking for some reason message is a function. And I try to call it, well, I get this red line that tells me this expression is not callable. Now, if I put this in regular JavaScript, you get no error at all. And in fact, I, can, I wouldn't know this is a problem. I wouldn't know that I'd put this in wrong until I run it. So if I do uh, node main.js, then I get my type error, message is not a function. But with TypeScript, it tells me here as I'm typing. This expression is not callable, type string has no call signature. Now check this example out. Let's say I have a, a constant of user and I have a name. Again, we'll just put Travis and age equals 40. And by the way, 40 is a prime decade, so I'm not at all ashamed of letting you know I'm 40. So we have code completion with TypeScript. I can do user dot, and it's gonna show up, hey, do you want age or name? And let's say for some reason I choose like location. I'm gonna get this error that says property location does not exist on type. So you can't call something that's not callable. Now, if I, again, if I take this and put this in JavaScript, I'm not gonna see any issue. No lines, nothing that tells me I have an error until I run it, and let's, Let's console.log this out. And then when I run it, I get an undefined. So anything that's undefined is just gonna show up undefined. Well, in TypeScript, it's gonna catch the undefined. So that's an example of a non-exception failure or calling something that isn't callable. Another cool feature is catching typos. And you know, as developers, we're good at typos. So if I say let announcement equals hello, and then down here, I want to call announcement announcement dot to lowercase. I get an error. And under here it says cannot find name announcement. Did you mean announcement properly spelled? Well, if I put this in JavaScript, I don't get any error. Actually, I do get this little white uh, ellipsis thing that actually gives me the TypeScript error, so TypeScript will show up here too, see this TS2570, but, it, but I don't get a red line. So if I don't see this little white, these white dots, I won't know, but in TypeScript, it's loud and clear. So it catches typos. Now the final example is like logic errors. So if I do const num1 equals 30, and const num2 equals a string of 30, and then I say if num1 equals num2, then console.log uh, the word match. I'm gonna get this red squiggly that says the this condition will always return false since the types number and string have no overlap. Now if I put this in JavaScript, crickets. It doesn't catch it. Like this will never be true, this will always be false, this, so this will never work. You don't know that. And then if you actually run it, it still doesn't matter because it's not gonna catch anything. It's just never gonna work. In TypeScript, it's gonna catch it. It's gonna let you know, hey, this will never be true. Like this will always be false. And in other languages that would tell you, hey, well, I need to return something else, like not a match or something like that. So anyway, the point of all this is that real time while you're typing, TypeScript will find your errors. It will help you with autocorrect and it will point out your errors that JavaScript will not because JavaScript doesn't catch them until runtime. All right, number three will be quick. TypeScript allows you to use your ES6 and ES7 code before browsers support it because it actually compiles down to JavaScript. And that's one neat thing about TypeScript. It just compiles down to regular JavaScript. It has its static type checking. It checks all of this stuff while you're typing. It helps you out. And then when you compile it, it compiles to regular JavaScript. So you can use ES6 and ES7 and whatever the latest JavaScript is, and it compiles it down to a JavaScript that browsers accept. Now, the compiling part of JavaScript takes a package. So let's go back to VS Code. So to be able to compile TypeScript, you need to install the NPM package. So you can go npm install dash G TypeScript. This installs it globally on your machine. So make sure you run that. And once that's installed, to compile your TypeScript into JavaScript, you simply type TSC, 
and then whatever your TypeScript file name is, test.ts, and it's gonna create the JavaScript equivalent file. So when I run this, it's gonna show me my errors. If num1 equals num2, you see this red line, and it tells me this will always return false when I compile it, but it still compiles into JavaScript. So you might be thinking now, wait a minute, there's an error in TypeScript, why did it successfully compile into JavaScript? Well, that's another neat thing about TypeScript and it's gonna be number four. So number four is that it's optional. You can add types as needed in TypeScript. What that means is you can take your regular JavaScript that runs fine, you have some JavaScript, runs great. You can take that and move it into a TypeScript file. And even if TypeScript picks up the errors, throws a bunch of red lines, it will still compile successfully into JavaScript. Now you might be wondering, well, what's the point then? Well, TypeScript wants to give you the flexibility to incorporate it into your project without breaking anything. It assumes that you know best. So you can actually just use the TypeScript part of it and introduce types and type checking as needed. Or if you wanna keep it really, really strict, you can let it know to do that too. If we look back here, I have this problem in my TypeScript file that this condition will always return false since the types number and string have no overlap. But when we compile it into JavaScript, it looks great. So again, you can take your JavaScript, put it into TypeScript, and just put in the checks over time as needed. Now, if you do decide that, hey, no, no, I want TypeScript to be completely clean before it compiles successfully, then you can do this. You can say TSC, then you could put dash dash no emit on error. And then your file name, which is test. .ts, and when you run this, it's not going to compile. Like, let me delete my test.js, move to trash. Let's see if it creates it. So if I run this, it's not gonna create it because there's an error. So you can force it, but again, a lot of people want to introduce TypeScript gradually and maybe on a selective basis. So to do that again, tsc test.ts will compile into this test.js. And then when you run your app, you want to use your test.js, of course as your main JavaScript file. And then in your build process, you'd want to run your TypeScript to compile into JavaScript. And number five is that it's becoming more and more the standard with front-end development. So if you go on LinkedIn now and look up React jobs or front-end developer jobs, you're gonna see eight times out of 10 TypeScript in there. Because as companies have developers build out their code base, they wanna make sure that code base is safe in that it's clean, in that it's checked over well, in that as it grows, it's dependable over time. And they're seeing that, hey, with this TypeScript edition, our JavaScript is a lot cleaner, it's less buggier. So they're putting that on their job postings more and more. In addition to that, if you come down to the bottom of the TypeScript page, you'll see that in the 2020 developer survey, TypeScript was the second most loved programming language. In fact, the 2021 survey, it was also second under Rust, and then over here, TypeScript was used by 70%. And over here, you'll see the TypeScript was used by 78% of the 2020 State of JS respondents, with 93% saying they would use it again. People love TypeScript. They like the functionality that it adds on to JavaScript. And because of all this, I think it's a very good idea for you to learn it. So the next question is, how do you learn it? Well, there's a lot of great tutorials out there on YouTube. I thought about making one myself, but there's a lot already. If you want me to make one, let me know. Otherwise, go out there and learn it because it's really important. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you found it helpful, click that thumbs up button and I'll see you in the next video.